I am DJ Jen with WNYU here interviewing Magdalena Bay now on their Mercurial World Tour. Um, and the titular album is now out on Luminelle and The Orchard. It's been out since October. So I just wanted to say to begin with, um, congratulations on the news about opening for Charlie in New York and Chicago. Um, I saw that she guys, she really inspired you guys. Um, and I just wanted to know what other influences um, like her pop cohort that era had on the path to Ma Magdalena Bay. Yeah, well, thank you. We're mm -hmm. super excited for that. Yes, extremely. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess there are like a few key albums, I think, for us that really like, because, you know, we, we didn't really listen to pop music at all. We listened to like progressive rock and like a lot of Radiohead <laughs> and stuff. Um, but when we kind of decided on a whim, we wanted to make pop music. There were a few albums, like as we started looking into what it was all about, that like really spoke to us as something that was in interesting to us. And I think one of them, you know, was the Vroom Vroom EP um, by Charlie, you know, which um, yeah. Sophie produced. Um, that was oh. one. Another one was Art Angels by Grimes. Mm -hmm. Another one, Moth by, by Charlie. So, yeah, I feel yeah. like there's like these like <laughs> key records for us that that kind of um, convinced us that that pop music was actually cool and and exciting and and fun. Yeah. I speaking of progressive rock, um, you guys got your start in like Tabula Rasa, where you, well, um, the first mm -hmm. band you guys did. Um, I want uh, what kind of influence does that progressive rock songwriting have on your pop music now like does that inform your approach to it well i think i think the what spoke to us about those those records that i mentioned earlier is that they're all like i don't want to say like experimental i mean they are experimental in a way but i'd say they have a progressive quality like i think yeah. of that, i think of magdalena as having that yeah i think sometimes like you know progressive can be in different ways maybe mm -hmm. it's in the production maybe it's in like the melodies maybe it's in this or that <clears throat> so we probably retain a, a little bit of that progressive rock spirit but we're not like actively thinking about it it's so funny because in the <laughs> progressive progressive rock like has become like a signifier of, of like a genre but really all it means is like you know music that has like a progressive or like experimental attitude to to it you know so i think mm -hmm. like um there's more there could be more to that term than just like stuff from the 70s you know that that we love but <laughs> so i think it's just kind of like there's room to expand what that that phrase means you know mm -hmm. um some other stuff about um how you guys approach pop music i saw how you wrote cherry um was inspired by Lamour Tajour's from uh well not from Uncut Gems but you said I saw it first in Uncut <laughs> well, that's Gems where, that's so. where we know it from I guess yeah. where we first heard it from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so I wanted to see uh what were some other uh kind of non non-traditional influences on Mercurial World any anything else that informed it like that yeah I mean I don't know if there was anything kind of as like di direct. direct honestly but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know we spent a lot of lockdown kind of like watching movies and going on sort of like you know really old websites and we just kind of had the time to chill and take in uh like different art that we weren't taking in before because right. we were just mm -hmm. in like the day-to-day -day, you know whatever thing the routine the rush I guess one one direct thing was like the guitars and you lose. I think mm. I after we saw Scott Pilgrim, I was like inspired by like the soundtrack <laughs> to that. I was like, and I actually looked it up and like, oh, is, they like I think um Beck worked on that soundtrack. Yeah, oh, Beck did the soundtrack. Yeah, and he was like, oh yeah, I took like acoustic guitars and ran them through fuzz pedals, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. So that's I, that's what I did for the <laughs> guitars and you lose. They're all it's all acoustic guitars, all the distorted ones just. Just ran through my uh, big muff. There you go, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. And there is a lot of that video game that Poppy influence all across Mercurial World. Um, mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask, like, what are are there any specific video games you guys have in mind? Even not even in the music, but in like, so so to speak, the world building of Mercurial World that you know specifically inspired that. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, we we played Twilight Princess, which is a, a Zelda game that was made for Wii. Yeah. I mean, and I think just yeah. like the 
the mood of that game is so great you know like all the interactions between like minna and and link and just like the soundtrack is so like it's amazing yeah it just creates like a, a really nice atmosphere that i feel like um you know it doesn't exist in like breath of the wild even though breath of the wild is such a great game it doesn't have that same same like deep vibe <laughs> that twilight princess does so i think i think that was probably a, something i guess that we, what qualities did you see in Twilight Princess that you didn't see in Breath of the Wild? Um, well, it's definitely more like story, plot, yeah. yeah, like story mm -hmm. driven and mm -hmm. character driven, like which is is really fun and it's darker, mm -hmm. um, for sure. And it kind of has like, yeah, I don't know. It's just the soundtrack is so amazing, like for each part of the story, for going into the the twilight or right. yeah the transformations all that good stuff it's just really cool it pulls you into that universe yeah breath of the wild is amazing obviously it's so fun to play but i feel like it sort of lacked the the, like the character, the character yeah. like you don't really care about the characters you know in breath of the wild it's like you're more just like trying to like do all the cool stuff you just know to fly. right yeah glide and <laughs> did that inspire more the music or the like the feel of mercurial world no, I mean we were just playing it. Around, I'm not sure what seeps in. Am I reading too much into into Twilight Princess right now? Yeah. I mean we played like how many like 800 hours. We, we played a lot so. of it when we were making the record. <laughs> I'm sure. I think yeah, just like the atmospheres, we really we loved. loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the world building of well, I say world building, but um, just the world of Mercurial World. Um, I saw your set last Friday. It was fantastic, and you guys do stage yeah. banter with AI. Um, which is um, your character of Cherry. So I wanted to ask this before I saw the show, but um, the Cherry you write about in your song, I saw somewhere that's probably unattributed that you wrote it about a friend. I've seen people saying it's written about yourself. Is it about that character Cherry, that AI Cherry? <laughs> I think <laughs> Cherry, the song is kind of about like different friendships and like relationships with others and myself. And I think when we were thinking about our live show, we loved the idea of like incorporating a new character and we kind of had to <laughs> give, give her, her a name, name. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like let's name her cherry i thought cherry it's the funny AI because came. everyone you oh. know so many people ask who is cherry and they're like yeah cherry's the robot you know it's right there <laughs> so the robot came after the song yeah yes <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> like ruined the mystery there but <laughs> that's okay where did the name come from in the first place oh uh, i don't know it's just like a really beautiful name honestly <laughs> so yeah uh i was interested in a lot of the music videos that you guys have been doing now um i think like a lot of your earlier stuff and your tiktok stuff obviously has this diy feel to it and with the transition to i mean a bigger budget on the newer music videos cherry especially um how does that help you explore more themes of like transhumanism and um it's kind of this vaguely cyberpunk thing you guys are doing <laughs> yeah it's cool i mean it's awesome having like being able to work with talented people um like having collaborators to kind of take our vision to the next level mm -hmm. um and it's been really fun doing that throughout the album um yeah and i think the album has themes that lend itself to like video con concepts that maybe are a little more um mm -hmm. i guess Thematic, <laughs> not to use the word theme again, but conceptual is what I was looking for. Then, um, mm -hmm. then like our previous songs, because um, there is a little bit more of of a concept for the record. Right. So we're having fun using the music videos as a way to sort of explore the the concepts, you know, that carry through the record. Is there a consistent thread between them? Like, the is there a running? I don't know, Magdalena Bay lore that you guys are continually building on or is it just exploring individual ideas with each one it's kind of you know it might be a mix like i think there's like maybe different things going on like after we had written a lot of the songs we kind of like went back and looked at the lyrics and we're like oh wow there's through lines here that just kind of naturally emerge because of the because of like our lives you know and just what we're what we're writing about and musically too you know like sometimes things sort of align um, and then we have specific ideas like about this concept of, of time and things. So mm -hmm. I think it's like fun to 
to weave those together because it kind of leaves things open ended to in open to interpretation. Yeah, I think it's like half a concept album, and you half know, not. and <laughs> half not. I don't want to like say it's it's like a, a one story, but there's definitely like a unified um or at least a couple of unified themes, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the, the album. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like those have been themes you've been exploring since your first EPs, or is it something you wanted to bring more into your first LP? I saw you when you when you were writing Mercurial World, you said like you had a lot more time to put thought into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think when you're writing the EPs, you know, the EPs are really just like a collection of singles, right? And um, mm -hmm. we that's sort of how we approached it when we were writing. We're just like writing the songs. Um, we had no intention of like collecting them together and then it just like, I guess, was something that made sense to do. We actually put out six of the eight uh, songs off of a little rhythm as singles. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it was definitely more of like, here's the songs we've been making or the record mostly in part, well, not mostly in part, but partially in part due to the pandemic and having a lot of time at home, we were able to like, conceptualize a lot more and like and like build more of a, a narrative i feel as, as far as the lyrics like um maybe the earlier stuff was just kind of figuring out what pop music was <laughs> right. and like what it could or should say and mm -hmm. by the time we got around to writing the album we just felt more confident with like getting a little weirder with things and, and, and maybe more personal more personal yeah mm -hmm. which is was really fun yeah. mm -hmm. i really love the lyrics on secrets your fire um, and, um, the rollout for this album was really, I, I love when it's <laughs> like really involved the world. Um, and I just, like, I know you guys had a section on your website for people to submit their secrets. Are there any that still stick out in your head now? <laughs> oh man, there's so many. It's... Well, we have this hotline where people call right. and leave it and we've been so busy with like everything. <laughs> yeah, I figured idea. you weren't keeping up anymore, but... <laughs> yeah, first we but were we need to like go. Hundreds. We have, like, uh, yeah, a few hundred to, like, dig back in, but there's, when we were listening to them, there's some really... Amazing ones. But it's crazy, because, you know, they, they span from very funny and, like, you know, yeah. just cute to, like, honestly very serious and... Uh, and dark. And dark, yeah, mm -hmm. so... Are there any that stick out in your head that... Oh, wait, I, I don't know... Are they, are they supposed to be private between you and the you and the? No, because no. we put them on our website. Well, we oh, say yeah. in the voice thing, we're gonna put this on our website. <laughs> <laughs> but are there any that stick out in your head? Um, I mean, there's just some of people being like, I don't think I'm in, really in love with my partner, but I just can't tell them. So I mm -hmm. guess I'll just keep doing this, <laughs> <laughs> and which is like really sad. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, those are some, and then yeah, again, there's some very funny ones, <laughs> and we like you know having the whole mix of those up on the web page for the secrets yeah we're still the our plans for the voicemails are in progress yeah but they're we, not done yet and we have to go and listen to all of them yes. <laughs> oh you're still oh this is you're this is still happening i thought i thought it was going to be just for the initial mercurial world but now i'm excited oh, no. we're still, still we're still getting world. them and we're still gonna do, do something, something. <laughs> <laughs> um so after I know you guys played a string of shows um around the release of Material World, but how does it feel to be on your first, you know, like the big full fledged tour for it, and like to see the physical reception after so long? It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it really like you notice when we start playing Secrets and everyone sings along, and you could hear the whole <laughs> crowd. Yeah, it's really insane. Special. Yeah. It's cute when people do the numbers with their fingers. I know they were doing yes. Cherry. <laughs> so i just want to conclude with a question that i stole from my friend at tone glow joshua minsu kim he asked this to everyone um i just wanted to ask uh what do you guys love about each other oh uh, you go first <laughs> i don't know mika's just like a one of those unique talents in the world you know uh <laughs> so that's it's special i don't know i'm just lucky to to get to be around her every day wow no yeah i don't even know where to start matt's the best <laughs> he i feel like i don't know just as a musician is amazing like not just as an instrumentalist but also a writer which is so cool and producer 
but he's just always really calm and patient and it makes all the crazy stuff we do really fun and like possible <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys so much um this has been jen with M magdalena bay on wnyu have a great rest of tour uh, are you guys in philly or dc right now we're in uh somewhere between philly and dc somewhere in the, oh, I in you the on middle the tour okay okay <laughs> Uh, well, have a great rest of tour. I hope you guys have a great show. And thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Have, thank a, good you. have a good day. Good day. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>